What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, and for the first time, I'm going to react to a metal song. Uh, that is to say, I'm not a huge metal guy. I've never really paid close attention to the genre. I've always respected it. You know, I had some friends going as back as early as, like, fourth and fifth grade who were into Iron Maiden and some other bands. And I was like, oh, that's cool, you know? But at the time, I was sort of listening to like a number of different things uh, like pop music classical music i had started to listen to a little bit um of hip-hop although not until i discovered wu-tang a few years later like when i got to junior high would that really sort of um intensify um and again when i discovered punk rock around the same time that would be a big thing but so basically i was aware of some people who listened to metal but it was never anything i got into um, nevertheless, when I got a lot older, and that indeed, only about four or five years ago, I would say, um, I remembered a friend of mine, Ira, this guy, Ira Ingram, he's a, a skater. Um, I remember him being really into Iron Maiden, and I remember him talking about, like, oh, well, you know, the thing is, a lot of their lyrics are sort of, like, about history or philosophy or, like, world religions, and they, they tell stories in their songs. So I was interested by that, and I had started, to th you know, because um, I had recently joined social media. Um, I was late on social media. I didn't join Facebook until I think like 2015, something like that. Um, and so when I did, I like reached out to some old friends and like whatever, and he was one of them, and that got me thinking about Iron Maiden. And it reminded me, like, oh, wait a minute, uh, Hallow Be Thy Name, like, the first half of that song was in a skate video that I saw way back in the day, a skate video from Toy Machine called Welcome to Hell. Pretty famous skate video. Um, uh, Jamie Thomas and um, Ed Templeton and a bunch of other guys, like, had cool segments in it. Um, I believe Chad Muska was, like, removed from the video because he and Templeton got into a fight, something like that. Uh, but in Jamie Thomas's segment, which is sort of the crowning part of the video, um, it plays the song. Now, it actually plays only up to the part where it actually kicks into a higher gear and gets faster. Uh, but I like that. And so when I was sort of re-engaged with Ira on Facebook, I started thinking about Iron Me, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to buy it. So I bought the album, uh, The Number of the Beast. Uh, and I enjoyed it so much that I bought their next album, which is Peace of Mind, and I enjoyed that so much that I bought the next album, which is Power Slave, and you might guess, I basically went and bought all the Bruce Dickinson albums. I decided to not get the, what is it, the Blaze Bailey albums, or the, who was the, who was the first guy? Um, uh... Uh, it starts with an A, I want to say his surname, but I, basically I just decided to like, okay, well the version of the band that I know is the Bruce Dickinson version. So I've gotten all the versions that um, he's the singer on. Um, and indeed, uh, I have come to very much enjoy their tunes. Um, it, it's like my friend said, um, a lot of their lyrics are about like historical people or episodes. Not to say, look, I'm a historian, so it's not to say that like every single line in every single song I say would check out like in a complete fully accurate way. I remember the you know in Alexander the Great there's a line about how he paved the way for Christianity and I remember thinking like well that was several hundred years later and technically you know he was spreading a uh, like religio cultural form through his military victories that would later be seen by Christians as pagan and heathen and so on. So like it was a very teleological interpretation to say that he paved the way for Christianity. So again, it's not to say that like every single line and every single one of their songs I think is like perfectly accurate, but I really do enjoy um, their lyrics and I enjoy that their songs are about history and so on. Um, and philosophy, and again, religions, and what really interested me is when I started listening to their music, is I realized, like, I had a bit of a stereotype about metal that, you know, it's about, like, being wicked and, like, whatever, and I get it, there are different subgenres where lyrical content tends to be very different, I get that. Um, but I was fascinated when I started listening to Iron Maiden's songs, because Fear of the Dark wasn't about being nasty and wicked, it's about being scared, it's about, like, getting that creepy feeling and it's about being vulnerable not being like an aggressor or whatever i found that really interesting then i listened to two minutes to midnight which is basically saying hey we could be on the verge of blowing each other up which you know now about 30 years later or so it feels like wow that song's really prescient again um, but I found that to be interesting, like, oh, it's not about, like, oh, we can't wait for everyone to die and embrace the carnage and death. It's sort of like, yo, like, unless we're, like, careful, Eddie, you know, he's going to come for all of us and pull us all down into the grave. Um, so I was really interested by their lyrical content when I started listening. Again, even if one or two lines here or there, I was like, well, technically, you know, that kind of thing. So I very much enjoy the band. Um, I love their uh, guitar solos. They have really cool guitar solos, um, which does make me think of a line from Jello Biafra, um, 
Ted Kennedy's, the, what is it, Triumph of the Swill, the music's all right when there's more ideas than solos. Look, I respect that. I totally agree. But I don't mind a, a good solo here and there. And Iron Maiden has a lot of good solos where, like, both of the guitarists, or I think there's three guitarists now, so they'll kind of, like, take turns or they'll do, like, duos and so on. Um, so yeah, I'm just a big fan of the band now, even though it, I'm still, in a way, catching up with everything. Um, I have listened to all their albums with Bruce as singer now, um, and I have come to like really enjoy at least a few songs on every album, and I don't think there's any album that is like weak. I mean, I've heard people talk about, like, say, No Prayer for the Dying, that that, oh, it's not quite on the level, whatever. I think that's a great album. Um, so again, um, their style has sort of evolved, or at least they've, they've gone down a few different paths. Um, I really enjoy Bruce's voice, the human air raid siren. Uh, we all know like the the intensity of his voice in the 80s, but I still think he can really like hit some great notes and um, uh, provide that sort of like narrative singing quality. Um, and you know, I think the Senjutsu album is a great example of that. Um, so basically, with all that set up, let me just say I've become a big fan in the last few years. Um, I don't, I'm not like a lifelong fan. I haven't been listening to them like 30, 40 years, like a lot of people. Um, but I have become a massive fan recently. I don't know if I have a favorite album. I'd say if I do, it's one of the first four, maybe, um, with Bruce. So you know, Number of the Beast, Peace of Mind, Power Slave, or Somewhere in Time. And it's funny because I remember reading an interview where Bruce didn't really like Somewhere in Time that much because none of his songs were picked to be on the album, and he felt like. You know, it wasn't as fun to be in the band anymore, whatever, but, you know, with apologies to Bruce, I love that album. I think, um, especially the Caught Somewhere in Time, I fucking love that track. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite album, but it might be one of their earlier ones. Nevertheless, we are going to listen to Hallowed Be Thy Name, just because it's the first Iron Maiden tune I knew, and it's the first Iron Maiden tune that, like, when I came back to, you know what, I'm going to sit down and listen to Iron Maiden, and oh, what do you know, on the first album that I've decided to buy, there's that song, um, as the, like, you know, the final song of the album, which is often, often like, a really powerful song, because that's the final message in the story that you just told. So, here we go. Um, I'm sure many of you know about the lyrics. A uh, person is waiting uh, to go to the gallows after having been sentenced to death. We don't, we don't know what he's been charged with. I have, I like to imagine he's a regicide. He committed a grave uh, crime by killing the, the head of state. Um, again, interpret as you wish, but that's the way I sort of take this. We do know he did it, though. I know some people said we don't know if he did it. There's a song like, I'm not sorry, he says this later. I'm pretty sure he did it. It's just the question to him, was it justified or not? And will the reward and the salvation, will that actually occur? I know some people will think that the, the Hammersmith live from, what is it, 82 or 81? Um, that that's like the version. I think it's 82. Um, I get that, uh, but I like reacting to physical media here, so that's why I've done the album version. about it in lots of reaction videos, but like, at the different stages of grief, like, can't believe it's happening, he's like, you know, searching for a, a way out, an excuse. What is it like? 
denial, anger. Eventually, it leads to acceptance. But... It's hard not to see Jamie Thomas skating around, man. This part especially. It does like a long shot of him going through the streets right here. Eventually he goes off the top of someone's car while they're in it at like a red light. And <laughs> the guy's like, what the fuck? unjust, sir. Maybe your belief system is off, but even if it's accurate, maybe what you did was not divinely sanctioned. Hopefully it's a truth of the good variety. I can't agree with that. I'm not a subjective idealist. I, I reject Berkeley and his conclusions. Contemporary physicalism is a nuanced thing, it's not just old school materialism, but yeah, I don't think life down here is just an illusion. With full respect to Steve Harris's lyrics. So this is where the Welcome to Hell section with Jamie Thomas fades out as he's doing this 50-50 grind down a stair barefoot. Uh, so I, ne I didn't hear this part until much later. video, Bruce is hilarious in this part, he's just really fucking like rocking out with the crowd. Bro, this part always makes me think of like Castlevania, like I'm playing like an enhanced version of the original Castlevania game on NES and I'm like storming through the castle. Simon Belmont, baby. They should make a a, re, a redone version of uh, Simon's Quest or the original Castlevania with an Iron Maiden soundtrack. Somebody make that happen. Yo, Bruce. I got goosebumps, Bruce. Shout out to the original drummer. Yeah, it's incredible. I can't even imagine, like, um, 
you know, seeing this back in the day, because my understanding is that at that Hammersmith concert, this album hadn't even come out yet, so it was basically a song that nobody knew. It was, you know, brand new, even for people who had been listening to the band for the first two albums um, with the original singer, who, again, it's like Paul Ano Anio? I'm blanking on exactly what his name is. I do apologize. I know the Maiden fans out there are like, oh my god, bro, this fucking guy. Like, stick to your punk rock. Uh, but no, like I said, um, I can't even imagine what that would have been like. And so, um, I know uh, that they've still continued to tour into recent years, in the um, recent albums. Um, I do believe, you know, uh, COVID, um, they were on hiatus. And I know there's been this sort of thing with Brexit. I remember seeing an interview with him. He's like, look, I know I very famously supported Brexit, but I think it needs to be done in a better way and whatever. So I don't know if that's prevented them from playing some shows that they might have otherwise done. Um, I'm not really going to get into the politics of that. That's not what this is about. I'm just going to say um, that I'm a big fan and I do uh, very much... Um, appreciated my friend Iris for putting them back onto my radar um, as an older person with a bit more disposable cash where I was able to go through and you know get their albums and actually just sort of go through their catalog in the way that their fans have for a long period of time on a you know sort of condensed time scale uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm a big fan. There's at least a few songs in every one of the albums that you see here uh, that I'm a fan of. I'm a big fan of. I mean, I honestly, I don't think it's like a really a bad song. Like, I don't, I've never listened to an Iron Maiden song and be like, wow, that was really crap. Um, if anything, it'll be like one like, yeah, that was all right. And then the next one, oh, fuck, that was amazing. Um, so honestly, if there's any songs on any of the albums you see up there that you'd like to hear uh, reacted to, uh, please let me know. Like I said, I react to physical media on this channel here, or, you know, I have had uh, techno friends send me, like, digital-only tracks. So I do react to some digital stuff, um, including, you know, like CDs, which are te technically digital. But the point is, um, I don't react to YouTube videos here. Um, I totally respect that that's the way most people do reactions online, but I just kind of want to celebrate physical media and like the actual releases, you know, with the liner notes and the artwork and so on. So that's what I do on this channel. So if you're new here, uh, do me a favor, you know, uh, check out some of my other videos. I'm not going to say like hit the like button or hit the subscribe button, that's up to you. Um, but I do react to a lot of content here, punk rock, hip hop, reggae, jazz, techno, hardcore, um, goa trance, you name it. So um, if you're into any of those things, classical music, if I didn't mention that, um, if you're into any of those things, uh, do check out my catalog, and if you like what you see, then you can hit the subscribe button. Um, but yeah, bottom line, I had another channel um, that was mainly techno-oriented, you know, had a couple hundred subscribers, I think like 250 by the time that I lost access, which happened to me because it was linked to my old college email, and eventually I guess YouTube and Google told my college, like, nope, alumni aren't going to have access to our services anymore. So the, my old channel's still up, you can still go look at it, it's just the same as this, but my full name, Matthew Snyder, instead of Matt. Snyder. Um, but I'm over here now, so if you are interested in seeing more videos, this is the page you should uh, subscribe to. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching. If you do have any requests or recommendations, please let me know. Other than that, have a good day, have a good night. I'll see you next time. Peace.